it's, it feels like something was definitely wrong and I want to see it come to light because I want to trust I want to trust the RCMP, I want to trust my town, I want to trust my government again. And right now I don't, and a lot of people don't. And if another flood happened again, people aren't leaving their homes when the RCMP come knocking. Jeremy Gwilt, resident of High River, Alberta, expressing his frustration with the RCMP after over last summer's gun grab. He's not alone. Well, shocking new results from a poll that shows the worst consequence from that, from that flood and the RCMP's actions could be the Canadians will now be less likely to listen to an evacuation order in the face of an impending natural disaster. Edmonton Sun columnist Lauren Gunter joins us now. Uh, Lauren, uh, National Firearms Association conducting this poll and pretty shocking findings. More people would say they would not comply with an evacuation order than would comply. Yeah, absolutely. The, uh, the NFA did a, a, a telephone poll of uh, 444 residents of High River uh, last week. And they found that uh, 42, uh, sorry, 44 percent would refuse uh, a, a mandatory evacuation order if the flood happened again. Only 36 percent would. Or 39, 39 said 39, they would sorry, comply. 39 percent yeah. would obey, and 44 percent wouldn't. And if you take out the undecided, you end up with 53 percent who would simply stay in their homes. Now, in a in a community of 13,000 people, uh, you know, accounting for four-person families and all those sorts of things, you're looking there at somewhere in the neighborhood of seven or 8,000 people who would simply refuse to go. I don't really believe that number. I'm not quite sure that the NFA believes it either. Uh, they said that it's a trustworthy but tentative number. Uh, I, I, you know, my well, you know, as far, that... as far as polls go, though, Lauren, uh, 444 residents of a yep. town of 13,000. That's a good We do example, provincial so. polling mm -hmm. for political races with that kind of sample size. Yep. So this is yep, a significant absolutely. sample. And mm -hmm. even if that many people would not um, yep. disobey, but, it does show that trust is gone. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, first of all, it shows that at least half the people in town don't trust the RCMP anymore. Uh, and say, say it's only half as many people as told pollsters uh, that would get, or only a quarter of the people who told pollsters they wouldn't leave actually stay. You're still talking about 2,500 or 3,000 people in a community of 13,000 who are just going to sit there and and that is dangerous you know i i think officials these days get over cautious they 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 make mandatory evacuation orders too quickly but you know i remember maybe you do or maybe you don't 1980 mount st helens in in uh, in uh, the united states blew I its do. top yeah and there were a few people who refused to go and then of course there was a huge mudslide that came down the side of that uh, that that volcano mm. uh, and and you know if, you, if you've ever flown over that volcano a, a third of the top is gone uh, and all that land came down and crushed uh, people who who refused to get out so it's dangerous to refuse a mandatory evacuation order but i understand if there's a 50 50 chance and that's what happened in in high river there's a 50 50 chance that while you're out of town the Mounties are going to come and kick down your door and tramp all over your house and search in private places in your home without a warrant and take your property and leave your door off the hinges, then you may think twice about going. And that's exactly what happened. 1,900 doors kicked in in a community with not quite 3,400 uh, homes. And, so, and, and the majority of them, after the flooding was over, after you know any chance of finding survivors has long passed. So the worst is passed. So it really does go to the trust issue. Now, we've been tracking the RCMP Public's Complaints Commission and their report. It was supposed to be out earlier this year, then it was June, then it was August. Email I just received from them says October. They say the investigation's complete. I think their last round of interviews was May in High River. Their investigation's complete. They're writing the report based on all the uh, information they gathered. Yeah, and you know, the, the, you're, you may recall that when when Bob Polson, the commissioner of the RCMP, asked the Public Com Complaints Commission to look into this last July, they were going to release their report last October. So they're only going to be exactly a year after they had originally promised the yeah. report. But, you know, if it's a thorough report and if it's if it says all of the things it needs to say about what the RCMP did, then it will be worth waiting for. If it's unsatisfactory if the delay between the last visits to high river which are about two months ago and the release of the report two months from now if that delay has been used to 
soften things, to fudge things. Uh, you know, that's what's going to happen. There are going to be drafts that are going to be circulated to RCMP brass in yeah. Alberta and in Ottawa. They're going to be RCMP people and the Public Complaints Commission are going to take a look at it. If that happens and it gets too soft... It, it will further erode trust. It will. And then there'll have to be a judicial inquiry. The federal government will have to step in, or the provincial government, but I'm guessing the feds, and say, sorry, there's too much that question still. Uh, we're going to ha appoint a judge who will look into this and, and hold public hearings. All right, Lauren, we're out of time. That wraps it for now, but we'll stay on this story. Thanks so much.